Welcome guys to episode three of AZ Drone Talk and my name is Greg Reverdio. And I'm Rich Charpentier. Thanks for joining us today, guys. And today we're talking about a topic that's uh, very timely. It's the Class E airspace. And, and Rich has a trip coming up. Uh, Rich goes and, and goes to different clients and, and flies the drone in different areas of the country. And uh, he had a question about Class E airspace. Yeah, I'm actually planning a trip in a couple weeks with my RV. So for all you guys out there who travel, this is an important episode because um, I quickly ran it by Greg because I've gotten some authorizations. I had some questions about Class E and I'm heading up to Cortez, Colorado in a couple of weeks to work with one of my clients. And from Cortez, I'm going to be heading down to Springerville, Arizona as well. So I popped up the, um, the uh, map for Greg recently and I said, all right, what's going on here for me? And I, I know how to read the chart, but I want to make sure of uh, whether or not I'm legit in a, in a space. So we were talking about Cortez, Colorado, and Greg dug into some pretty interesting things. Yeah, and, and the interesting thing is that the FAA is confusing everyone. And if you've ever dealt with the FAA, which I have for a long time now, it's, uh, it's kind of what they do, unfortunately. <laughs> and so... <laughs> Uh, what, the reason they got things uh, confusing for us is, and, and, and this is, by the way, only for Part 107 operators, not if you're flying for fun. Uh, this is only for Part 107 operators. The FAA has decided that um, in the past that controlled airspace, Class B, C, D, and E, required authorization. And you had to do a lengthy process through the website, and we've both gone through that. And now they've decided they changed their mind that only certain types of Class E airspace have to get authorization. And so that's where it gets unfortunately a little bit confusing. We'll try to keep it very simple with this presentation, but we'll have a much more thorough presentation where we go into a lot more detail, but we'll answer Rich's question uh, with by looking at the map. So I, I just want to do, and, and I, we don't want to go again in too many details, but I want to show you here the difference between all the different types of airspace. And all we're interested in is, is class E1, E2, E3, E4, and E5, so one through five. You just have to understand that class E airspace is really uh, divided into eight different categories. The change recently with the FAA is that the only class that requires authorization is E2. And E2, to keep it simple, is when the airport is surrounded by Class E airspace starting at the surface. Anything else, a Class D airspace that has an extension, or a Class C airspace that has an extension, or Class B airspace that has an extension, is likely, likely is the keyword, not going to require authorization. Now, when I got my recent authorization, I passed it along to Greg because I applied for D and E in Prescott, Arizona. Um, since I live right next to um, Love Field. So I got two responses back um, on, my, on my application. For my authorization for Class D, it was approved. And for my authorization for Class E, since it was an extension, um, was not required. So my Which is an D, E4 in yeah. this case. So my D covered me for the D and the E because of these changes. Yep. And so the question is, and we've talked about this, is how do you know if it's a class E2, E3, E4, whatever E number it is? There's a very simple answer to that question, and I'll show, show it to you. And we'll go into more detail in the bigger presentation on, on how to figure this out. So I'm going to show you right here a really cool tool, which is Sky Vector. And Sky Vector really only gives you the type of airspace. It, it shows you a sectional chart. And this is Cortez. This is where Rich was uh, hoping to fly. And if you look in Cortez, you see the dash magenta line right here. That's a class E airspace starting at the surface. So based on what I just showed you, this should be, and it's because it's around the airport as the primary airspace, this should be an E2 airspace. The sectional chart doesn't tell us if it's an E2. So we have to go to this uh, website from the FAA, which is called the uh, FAA UAS Facility Map. Just type that. We'll actually put, we'll put a comment, yeah, uh, the will. link in the comment section. But if you go in here, and unfortunately it's not very user friendly, but Rich is going to be flying in Cortez. So I'm going to type, type Cortez, Arizona. Oh, Colorado. Uh, I did that earlier too. <laughs> Colorado. And you'll find it right here. Now, you can't 
you cannot find an airport by using the code. So CEZ is the, the code for Cortez. Unfortunately, we can't find that. So Cortez, Colorado right here. And look, immediately it shows the grid and that grid is going to tell us that we need authorization. Now we're going to click on any of them and click on one right here. And look, it says class E and it requires authorization up to 400 feet. And that tells me right here it's a class E2 airspace. Mm -hmm. And there's other ways to verify that it's an E2, but because it's in here, that's all we really need to do. Uh, you can also go on the, on the air map on the app of the phone and you'll see that's in class E2. Uh, but stay tuned. We'll put a link to the bigger video that we're going to do and then you can find a lot more information there. So, yep. so my bottom line for heading up to Cortez in a couple of weeks is really simple. Um, I will not be flying um, any missions for the client location there, so I'll just be doing um, the web work that I'm going up for. But what's coming up really soon, so while we're showing you all this, keep in mind the Lance system, the low altitude authorization system, um, is starting to roll out this year, and there are several, several different providers that you can get apps from where you can actually get authorization same day so it's going to really speed up the process the issue is we took a look to see when the cortez colorado area was coming up and that's going to be somewhere in may of 2018 and i'm taking the trip at the end of april so i'm out of luck there and and tell them too if, if you wanted to fly right now based on the on the on the current process you would have to submit an application through the FAA. And how long did it take you to get well, your application so I submitted last time? i submitted an application um in september and my application came through at the end of December. So that was actually not bad because poor Greg really, really took yeah. it bad. I submitted mine in February of 20... 2017. 17. Actually, I think it was even before that. It took me 10 months to get my application. Let's put it this way. Yeah. So 10 months where I could not fly. And unfortunately, the airport is big enough around our town that it covers everything. So that kind of uh, put a big dent in the business and uh, not being able to fly some areas. And uh, anyway, it's done yeah. now. They're, they're finally the FAA is rolling out this new system, which I think is going to be awesome. Tested it yesterday for the first time. Got yeah, really Phoenix. cool, yeah, really cool result, really fast. So we'll have a presentation on that as well, showing you how it works. Probably won't be a talk. We'll just do a, a quick uh, how-to yep. uh, using a print screen. And so, bottom line, if you're traveling with a drone, and let's say you're a commercial, a commercial pilot, um, you're going to need to be planning before you hit the road. You need to check out the uh, areas that you're going to see if there are any airports nearby, see what the, uh, air, uh, the airspace classification is. And with Lance, it'll probably go quicker and easier for you, but until Lance is there, um, if you're not authorized, if you didn't get that authorization, um, you shouldn't be flying there for commercial purposes. You could be flying for hobby purposes, but um, even uploading to a monetized YouTube channel is a commercial purpose. So before you set out on the road, see where you're going, uh, do a double check and find out the airspace that you're going to be in to make sure that you're going to have a good time while you're on your trip and trying to fly. All right, we'll see you guys in the next episode. And like Greg said, there is going to be a much larger class coming from Greg on airspace because even with or without Lance, you still need to double check because we have found with a lot of these apps that they're not always up to date, that they don't have all of the FAA data, and it could lead you to flying somewhere that you shouldn't be flying. Yeah, the biggest problem is they're incomplete, and, and some of them are up to date, but just incomplete. And I think there's only a few sources that I can think of, which is a sectional chart that has really all the information you need. Uh, but And then you have to use website like this. So it, it can get confusing. So we'll do a full course on that just to explain exactly where to get the information, how to get it quickly. And uh, But that's uh, another episode. Yeah. So. All right. We'll see you on the next episode, everyone. Thanks for joining us.